Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. In the midst of our Holy Week, as we've been journeying through each day and preparing our hearts for Easter, we're going to stop and pause here on this Good Friday to remember those scenes in Jesus' life from the Last Supper to the crucifixion. Now, this service is going to be a little bit different than other ones we've done before. And as we were planning to know the best way to prepare our hearts and minds this Good Friday, the verse that kept coming to our, our hearts and minds as a team was from Matthew 11, where Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now those first three words, come to me, have been recurring for us over and over again. And as we looked through those scenes from the Last Supper to the crucifixion, we started seeing how each scene in their own way and are an invitation for us to come to Jesus. So I want to tell you, tonight's service is meant to be interactive. It's meant to be something that you participate in not passively listen to. So whatever you're doing, I encourage you to stop, take a deep breath, because we're going to walk through each of these scenes one at a time, reading Scripture, and then responding in some way, either through song or through prayer. And so when we're reading those Scripture passages, and we're going to have a different member of our church reading each one, close your eyes if you need to, but whatever you need to do to be able to focus on that, just take that in. And then lean forward with us as we seek to respond to that, as Jesus invites us in various ways to come to me that I might serve you. Come to me in suffering. Come to me in fear in other ways as well. So let's begin this whole service by just hearing the word of God. John 13, 1 through 9. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and head as well. We see that our God is a God who stepped down low to become a servant in order to meet us right where we are. He came as one to serve us. Which means that if we're going to come to him, then we come to him ready to receive first. Which isn't always easy for all of us to receive. But just as Peter learned when he came to Jesus, that Jesus said, unless you learn to receive, Peter, you will not have life in me. So let's just sing and respond now. And as we sing these words about how good he actually is, understand that those words, he is good to us. So sing this with us. Be the 
fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song, and you are good. You're good. Oh, and you are good. You're good. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. And you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, you're good. Oh, and you are good, you're good. Oh, and you are good, you're good. Oh, I'll be reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 to 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he found them again sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. In that story, we see that our God is a God who willingly chose to enter suffering on our behalf. But he's a God who didn't just suffer in our place, but he's a God who comes and meets us right in the midst of our suffering to suffer with us. We may not always understand why trials, difficulties come, but we see that he's a God who is with us in the midst of it. So let's sing this song about how he is right there beside us the entire time. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there's a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. 
is another in the fire. All my dead left for dead beneath the waters And I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world I know I will never be alone there's another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grave that holds nobody. Now the power lives in me. There's another in the fire. darkness bows to him i can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between where's it i can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between us There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone, Jesus. I know I will never be alone. Be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I count the joy come every battle Yes, I know that's where you'll be There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding how good you've been to me, I'll count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. Count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. Count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. Mark chapter 14, verse 66. Peter disowns Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. 
and he broke down and wept. Peter lied about knowing Jesus because he was afraid of what might happen to him if he told the truth. He was scared of what they might do to him. Sometimes in life, there are external factors, things that come against us that we get afraid of or we grow anxious from. And when we think about Jesus coming to the cross to make the ultimate sacrifice for us, we often think about how he came to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of our guilt. And that's absolutely true. But he also came to conquer sin and death and evil and all powers that come against us. So tonight, we want to try something a little bit different. We want to take some time to do a confession of fear. I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. We're going to have some instrumental music, and I want you to take some time to prayerfully think about what are some things in life right now that you are fearful of, that are giving you anxiety, that maybe are making you worry for yourself or your family. Think about those for a little bit. Write them down. Maybe journal about them for a couple minutes. And then pray that Jesus would overcome those and bring you deliverance from those things.
Luke 23, 13 through 25. Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You have brought me this man as one who misleads the people. But in fact, after examining him in your presence, I have found no grounds to charge this man with those things you accuse him of. Neither has Herod, because he sent him back to us. Clearly he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore I will have him whipped and then release him. Then they all cried out together, Take this man away, release Barabbas to us. He had been thrown into prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time he said to them, Why, what has this man done wrong? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him whipped and then release him. But they kept up the pressure, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified, and their voices won out. So Pilate decided to grant their demand and release the one they were asking for, who had been thrown into prison for rebellion and murder. But he handed Jesus over to their will. Of course, Pilate nor Herod could find any guilt or sin in Jesus. Jesus was sinless, the spotless lamb that would come and pay for our sins. God's word says, if we confess our sins, he is good and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So with that in mind, would you join me in this responsive prayer where I will read the normal text and you can respond in the bold text. Lord, you showed us true humility by becoming one of us. Yet too often we practice pride. You cried alongside your friends and for the city of Jerusalem. Yet too often we rush past the pain of others and are careless about our cities. You loved those who were weak, despised, or cast out. Yet too often we only love those who are strong, respected, or popular. You freely forgave and healed. Yet too often we hold grudges and cause pain. You lived a perfect, holy life. Yet too often we, we do, do not, not yearn, yearn for, for righteousness. righteousness. You prayed that we who believe in you should be united with each other and you. Yet too, too often, often we focus on the differences, differences that separate us from other believers. You were mocked, whipped, and even killed for us. Yet too often we deny you. You call us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Yet too often we blend into or hide from our culture. Forgive us, Lord, and transform us that we might love you with all our whole hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Amen. Will you join us as we just sing this hymn, Jesus Paid It All? Jesus 
Jesus paid it all. All to him I own. And sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Wash away all my guilt and all my shame. Jesus died my soul to say, my lips shall still repeat, and Jesus paid it all, all to him my own, and sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow he washed it white as snow he washed it white as snow oh thank you jesus hope will raise the From Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. 
Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Lord, I thank you for this passage. I thank you for what we're, for what we're remembering tonight, that we are reminding ourselves of the sacrifice that you made, that you came to make without withholding yourself, but fully offering yourself as a servant to us, even unto death, Lord. You did not say that we had to take some part of the punishment, but Father, you took all, all of our unrighteousness, and left not one bit remaining. So we praise you, Father. We thank you. That is because of your willingness to serve us, your willingness to take our place on the cross, that we are able to have communion and fellowship, relationship and unity with you. We praise you for you are worthy of all all of the glory, and all of the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So often when I read the story of the crucifixion, I picture Jesus hanging high on a cross, far away from the people who are mourning his suffering. I picture him up there and us so far from him. But what I love about this song is that it helps me to picture him holding us in an embrace, drawing us close to himself, even while he's enduring death, even while he's experiencing all of the pain and suffering we should be feeling, he is holding us and protecting us even while enduring that.
with fully surrendered hearts uh, to the King who gave everything for us. I want to invite you to stand wherever you are and sing this last song with us. Together, I'll stand. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. raise our hands to receive the benediction. As those who come to him with nothing to offer but everything to receive, may we live as fully surrendered, grateful, forgiven people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Amen.